in the following chemical energetics question, the question reads that the conversion of graphite into diamond is an endothermic reaction. So the enthalpy is uh, plus three kilojoules per mole. So converting from graphite to diamond. And he's asking which statements are correct. And the first statement that's given is uh, that the enthalpy change of atomization of diamond is smaller than that of graphite. So this, uh, let's focus on this first statement, which is that the enthalpy change of atomization of diamond is smaller than that of graphite. Now, uh, if I'm given the enthalpy change of, so I'm going to start with the carbon, which would probably be in solid form, in graphite form. So carbon over here is solid. And he's saying that uh, it's getting converted into uh, carbon now in diamond form. So that's also a solid, but the but it's an allotrope. This enthalpy is plus three kilojoules per mole. So we know this enthalpy. What is provided is uh, uh, now he's given us two. He's, he's talking about the enthalpy change of atomization. Now enthalpy change of atomization is when one mole of carbon gaseous atoms would be formed so one mole of carbon gaseous atoms would be formed from from the element now that we the enthalpy change of atomization of graphite this would be the enthalpy change of atomization but it would be the enthalpy change of atomization of for graphite so let's write graphite as well that one mole of graphite carbon in graphite form got converted into gaseous atom this on the other hand, this arrow would be that one mole of carbon in diamond form would be converted into carbon gaseous atom. So this would be called the enthalpy of atomization. And this would be the enthalpy of atomization of diamond. So I've, I've completed this Hess cycle and this Hess cycle is, uh, is based on the enthalpy of atomization. Graphite getting converted to gaseous atoms, diamond getting converted into gaseous atoms. Enthalpy of atomization of diamond, and this is enthalpy of atomization of graphite. Now Hess law states that one path is equal to the other path. So if I if I follow the other path, uh, one of the arrows needs to be changed. Uh, this uh, this would be one path, and this arrow needs to be changed, so it should head in the other direction. So so the sign over here would change. So plus three kilojoules per mole would therefore be equal to, it's going to be equal to, so this arrow over here, this path over here would be equal to this other path, which would be enthalpy of atomization of graphite minus the enthalpy of atomization of diamond. So it's going to be enthalpy change of atomization of uh, graphite minus enthalpy change of atomization of diamond. So now focus uh, uh, on this. So I've rewritten this uh, in a better way. So plus three kilojoules per mole is basically equal to the difference between the enthalpy of atomization of graphite minus the enthalpy of atomization of diamond. Now the only way you are going to get a uh, you're going to get a positive value is if this is a bigger value and this one is a smaller value. So if you subtract a bigger value from a smaller value, you're going to get a positive answer. So so this uh, Hess cycle would prove that the enthalpy of atomization of uh, graphite is going to be bigger and the enthalpy of atomization of diamond is going to be smaller. So this first statement looks correct. The enthalpy change of atomization of diamond is smaller than that of graphite. So this looks perfectly correct. And if you look at the second statement, the second statement is also related to this. The second statement states that the bond energy of the C single bond C in graphite is greater than that in diamond. Now we've already proved that the enthalpy of atomization is in graphite is bigger. So if you want to make break all the bonds in graphite and form gaseous carbon atoms, you would need uh, you would need more energy. More energy would be needed. It's going to be a bigger value. So the reason why you're going to get, uh, need more energy is because you probably would be breaking stronger bonds. Whereas the enthalpy of atomization, atomization of diamond is smaller. And the reason why this would probably be smaller is because, because uh, the bonds formed or broken are not going to be very strong. So bonds over here in graphite would probably be stronger 
and the bond energy would be greater. So the bond energy of CC bond in graphite is greater than that in diamond. Looks perfectly correct as well. So since uh, the enthalpy of atomization of graphite is a, has, has a bigger value. And now finally moving to the next one. Uh, the third statement states that the enthalpy change of combustion of diamond is greater than that of graphite. Now we can use another formula. Uh, this is the reaction that we are talking about. Let me remove the rest of the, the old hair cycle. So I've removed the old hair cycle. This is the reaction we are talking about. Now the third statement states that the enthalpy change of combustion of diamond is greater than that uh, of graphite. So given the enthalpy change of combustion of graphite, And you're given the enthalpy change of combustion of uh, diamond as well. Then the enthalpy of this reaction is basically equal to. So the enthalpy of this reaction is plus 3 kilojoules per mole. Is equal to the enthalpy of combustion of reactants. Minus the enthalpy of form, uh, combustion of products. So it's going, to be the, it's going to be enthalpy of combustion of graphite or enthalpy of combustion of reactant minus the enthalpy of combustion of the product which in this case is is diamond so i'm using the hess law formula that if you if in a reaction you're given the enthalpy of combustion of graphite and you're also given the enthalpy of combustion of diamond so you can you can find the enthalpy of that reaction by simply subtracting the enthalpy of combustion of product minus the enthalpy of combustion of the reactant now, according to this equation, you're still getting a positive value, which means that the enthalpy of combustion of graphite uh, would be, it would be, definitely would be a bigger value. And the enthalpy of combustion of uh, diamond is going to be a smaller value. But this is actually not correct. There is a hidden... Uh, it's, it's a much more trickier question than it looks at first. Now this third, uh, this third statement, now focus on this identity again. Remember that enthalpy of combustion is always exothermic. So this, is, uh, this enthalpy change would have a negative sign and this one would also have a negative sign. So if I give this a negative sign, because the in enthalpy of combustion energy is always released, minus this enthalpy change would also have a negative sign. Now, two negatives would end up making a positive. So, in a default way, this sign would actually be the signs of the enthalpy changes would change. This would actually become negative and this side would actually become positive. So, if I'm getting an overall positive value over here, that would indicate that, uh, that this positive term is going to be bigger and this negative term would be smaller. So, this is the term that's going to be bigger. And this is the term that's going to be smaller. Only then can I get an overall positive answer if my positive term is bigger and my negative term is smaller. So the trick was that although the equation looked as if it was the enthalpy of combustion of graphite minus the enthalpy of combustion of diamond, but since enthalpy of combustion inherently is a negative exothermic value, that's going to make this term negative. And this would also be negative, but since there's another negative sign over here, this term in its entirety would become positive. So this term overall would have a positive value, whereas this term overall would have a negative value. And to have a positive enthalpy change at the end, the positive term would be bigger and the negative term would be smaller. So enthalpy of combustion of diamond is going to be bigger. So he's saying that the enthalpy change of combustion of diamond is greater than that of graphite and this statement is also correct so all three options are correct and if all three options are correct then the correct option would be according to the marking key would be option a